right behind you. Come on, the right McQueen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, you know. Uh, I met, not Dallas, but I probably about 35 years ago. I mean, right before, actually, right before the Olympics, we were going to go to Flying Line. And uh, at the time, I was working at Deer Blacks in my office was downtown at First Line Tower. So I could look over into the you know, beginnings of the new, I guess the, the new version of the up, up underground Alabama as her, uh, <laughs> as, as Bussy's models were built. As Bussy's models were being built. And from there, the relationship was established. Over the years, we've um, you know, uh, been involved in different kinds of like, activities, taking advantage of many different opportunities. And it's just a pleasure here. I just want to say congratulations again for just all that you've done and allowing me to be a part of the celebration. Thank you so much. And Greg and Tiffany must be next. I love you, Alice. Thank you so much. So, uh, I met Alice as a national sales manager for the Atlanta Convention Business Bureau upon invitation from Dr. Andrew Young, Tessie. moving from New York to Atlanta. My job was to bring conventions and associations and corporations she to meet me in Atlanta. Atlanta and then we would have Dr. Bussey decorate the beautiful conventions with your flowers. And we did a lot of conventions, two Super Bowls, one Olympics, and a whole lot more, including many black associations. So I love you, I appreciate you, and I thank God for you. Thank you, Bussey.
and then my children were older, and I was able, you know, I followed her, shadowed her, and she was just such a blessing to be introduced to me to everybody. I know it's all fast, but it's not going to be on the stage. But I thank God for this blessing. It's a great person. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Teresa Hardy. I am the former NAACP DeKalb president, and I am so honored to be working with Ms. Bussey. I've been in Atlanta for 22 years, and I have been working with her in community stuff. So we've been doing a whole lot of work there. We sit on the Splosh Committee, which is $696 million for DeKalb County, so we're trying to make sure your money is allocated right. I met Ms. Bussey, but she also said to me, you got to have a business, Teresa. You have to have a business. I do have a business. My business is Hardy Graham and Associate, and I do strategic and planning business solutions for small business owners. I also, during the pandemic, opened another business, and it is uh, the Dollar and Power Communities, where we're raising money to, to buy commercial and properties so that you can actually learn to invest. So it's an investment um, company. But I want to just spe give special thanks to the woman who we are all following um, to make a change in the Cab County and the world, as you can see. Um, so it's a pleasure to meet everyone. Good afternoon. I am Chuck Barlow. I am the CEO of Pan African American Chamber of Commerce. Ken Williams. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how long I've known her. I don't even know how old she is. <laughs> All I know is anytime anything come up in the conversation about Africa, I was going to get a call from Dr. Bussey. Um, and we have, it's, it's been interesting, people were talking about how Boston she is. She's really not Boston. She just expects results. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> See, she's not the kind of person that manages you. She manages your results. Yeah. Um, because she, when she asks you to do something, she expects results. And she will follow up, by the way. Um, but Alice has been a, 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 just a precious a friend to me. Um, one significant uh, thing that happened with me was that uh, Mayor Campbell wanted to, take, wanted to do a trade delegation to South Africa before his term was up. And um, they had all of these top executives of corporations, the AT&Ts, and all the big companies. And Alice said in a meeting, need to be some representation for small business, in particular black business. And so uh, she suggested that Chuck Barlow is going to go to represent small business. I am. <laughs> Tremendous significant thing. I don't know if Alice had anything to do with this, but each one of the HBCUs gave the mayor two scholarships each for uh, deserving South African students for us to award. Did you put any criteria on it that said you go get get two? And out of that, um, ended up recruiting a young man by the name of Abram McCall from South Africa. Now, Abram actually had been trying to get to Mars Brown. I don't know how he found out about Mars Brown, but because I was on the delegation, he contacted the mayor's wife at the hotel. She contacted me, met Abram. Abram said, Mr. Barlow, I want to come to America. I want to go to a black school. I want to get a dual degree in engineering. I want to come back to South Africa, start a business, and create jobs for my people. That was in 95. Uh, um, Abram came with Mars Brown went to Georgia Tech, got a dual degree in engineering. Um, he worked for Beer Skanska, went back to South Africa, started a business, had, in two years, had 42 employees, had built a school and a power plant, and Abram was extremely successful because of that person right there. Yeah. Thank you. Over 200 kids off the street. Wow. Wow. And 
be able to import flowers directly from the Caribbean. And that was the beginning of a business that fed the hungry uh, in the Caribbean uh, because that was just about the time that uh, people were pulling Mexico and Canada together, uh, but they had left behind uh, the islands of the Caribbean. Uh, you came to the rescue, uh, and you not only helped to revive the flower industry uh, of the Caribbean, uh, but you created and evolved a significant number of black-owned businesses across the, the southern part of this nation. And so that's one of the things that makes Atlanta a truly international city. It's not just that we have people who come from different places, but it's the business that we do that helps to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and heal the sick uh, all over the region. Now, that's the formula for getting into heaven. And I know you're not as old as me, uh, but you're getting old enough so that you need to start thinking about the fact that uh, when the Lord asks that you feed the hungry, you can say, yeah, I, I helped them sell the flowers they were growing. And I helped to make sure that the flowers in our churches lasted more than one Sunday. So God has blessed you, and you have passed those blessings on uh, to others uh, across the Southland. And I want to thank you uh, just for being you. A wonderful, loving, beautiful young woman uh, that has made a big difference on the planet Earth uh, because you truly are one of God's wonderful children. Yes. God has blessed you and you've passed on the blessings. And let me congratulate you uh, for the life that you've lived and that the service you've rendered. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen.
Founded over 50 years ago by her husband, James, Bussy Flores and Gifts has grown from its humble beginning, beginnings as a local retail shop into an international floor marketplace that is known for taking on challenging projects. And whereas prior to becoming a full-time businesswoman, she worked for more than 16 years with the United States Department of Labor in various positions, according to Atlanta and Los Angeles, ultimately becoming the first black federal representative for the state of Georgia. And whereas, as further testament of her outstanding leadership, she improved the infrastructure of the Atlanta Business League and led several transformative initiatives during her tenure mm -hmm. as its first female president. And whereas, in addition to her professional accomplishment, Dr. Bussey and her active volunteer, who has served on the boards of several organizations such as the Georgia Council of International Visitors, the Depart DeKalb County Council of Aging, the Atlanta Private Industry Council, and more. And whereas this distinguished gentlewoman has given inspiration to many through her high ideals, morals, and deep concern for her fellow citizen, and whereas a kind and generous person, Dr. Bussey brings joy and happiness to her family and to the many friends and neighbors who have the great pleasure of knowing her. And whereas Dr. Bussey has been dedicated to performing continuing innovation in the industry and remains steadfastly committed to the principles and skills, integrity and responsibility, and whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that the outstanding accomplishment of this extraordinary individual is appropriately recognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Dr. Alice White Bussey is commended for her many valuable contributions on behalf of the citizens of Georgia and extended best wishes for the future. <laughs> Helped to make the cap a better place for the county line Ellenwood area. 
has helped to take Atlanta uh, through the Atlanta Business League, small businesses, to a whole nother level. She has helped us through collaboration and partnerships. Oh, it's a big one. You got a whole level. <laughs> but, but I just want to say, uh, personally, besides all the whereas, we, we proclaim this day in DeKalb County, Dr. Alice White Bussey Day. Forever, forever, forever in the history of DeKalb. Y'all give it up now. This is her day. Y'all call her and celebrate all of that. And so part of this is, now I'm going to give my personal tribute since they got this up here. I, I just want to say uh, Dr. Bussey has been a, a profound impact on our family. Uh, from an international standpoint, she's helped me to really understand the international connections and economic development. And from a pan-African standpoint, I mean, Dr. Bussey, because I, when you move here, it's so easy because you see African American in so many places. But she made it cool to say black again. When she walked in the room, what are we going to do about black businesses? And so I had the pleasure of being up under some pan-Africans, uh, Kwame Ture was one of the ones who came and, and taught me in, in college. Uh, Haki Matabute, the one who wrote Black Man Absolutely Dangerous. He's another Chicagoan that had wrote a great book. And Ashwa Crazy, if you need to get that book called Stolen Legacy. And it'll tell you, and I told the young people today at Gresham Park, because most of them think that we started in slavery. Right. Because that's what you read. That's what I, I said, do you know you come from kings and queens? You know, the, the, the Hippocratic Oath didn't come from, from the Greeks. And then Pythagoras' theorem didn't come from Pythagoras. And so they said, I said, you've got to start from Kemet and learn your history all the way through. And Dr. Bussey made it so to help me to get all of those reconnections back. And so she got me. I went on a trip to South Africa. I had a chance. And I was uh, there to train uh, the African leaders. And I had Mandela Speechwriter was my driver. That was an amazing experience to have Mandela Speechwriter show me around. I went to like three provinces and had the chance to, to train the leaders on what we were doing here in the cab. Now I get to go back. I got, I'm going to Japan and a fellowship in doing some international economic development for all the counties in the country. That's because thinking outside, you just can't think local. You got to think global. Dr. Bussey, thank you for that. So y'all give it up for a great woman, great year, and look at this tribute to her. And let me just see right here. This is our tribute. This will go on her wall in that big fallacious office uh, that she has. Uh, and, and when you see this tribute uh, of, a, of a lady who has not just talked, she walks the walk. She has given all of us a seed. It's all about planting seeds. It. It's not all about taking, it's about giving. You can reap more than you sow. That's right. And we want to make sure, Dr. Bus, that you reap more than you sow. Yeah. So God bless you. This is the tribute to you. This is a great honor. I'm so glad you're doing that new Black Wall Street. Yeah. She kept it in her community. She could have went to what? What, the 191 Club? Yeah. Marriott Marquis. Yeah. But she kept it right here at Stone Chris, Georgia. Congratulations. Now we're going to give it to her, the lady of the hour, who has uh, built so many bridges and helped us. Y'all stand on your feet, and y'all give it up for that Dr. Alice White Russell. I want my, my, my brother, Melvin White, Melissa Melvin White, and my daughter, Alicia Buster Lowe. Can you stand so people can see where you are? Come on, come on. I just wanted you to see my immediate family. And then Dr. Barbara Lost Lost, my niece, pharmacist. I've got all of my immediate family. 
But I just want to thank you for coming and being and celebrating with me today. This really is a blessing and they're an extension of buses, my immediate family and buses floors. They all work in the flower shop. They all know about it. So in both sides of our family, we train them to be owners and be leaders of the ground. But just for a moment, I just want to share with you that James Bussey, we call him Jim. He was a special man, thank you about God, to help us do what we're talking about. He did it through flowers. God gave him that gift when he was a student at Morehouse. And that's when he started the flower shop. And so I just wanted to acknowledge what God, how he puts us together. And he put none of us back together because he was protecting gospel music. He sponsored a lot of groups and choirs and travel. He, we met in Los Angeles when he came out there for the Jane Cleveland Gospel Music Workshop of America and then helped organize a chapter here in Atlanta. Then he named, helped name the group the Atlanta Philharmonic Chorale. And they made an album, I happened to write the narrative on the back of the album. And it was through music and through pres preservation of it and our involvement in church that it was very unique for a teenager to want to do flowers and set up a business. But he kept <coughs> his dream. And then we met in Los Angeles and we were able to, we never stayed in the same place until we got there. So you can see God can identify and deal with the. I was in graduate school. I was traveling when we met in Los Angeles. But it was only I had made a commitment that I would never be a student and get married. And I would never stop traveling to get married. <laughs> so we continued that path and we followed through it and I was able to come to back to Atlanta and we were able to build the flower business. I told you that because the flower business allowed us to become the nerve center for the community, for us to do the work that you have heard about today. We were the meeting place, the gathering place through the flower shop. We trained over 20 businesses and helped develop people through the flower shop. We helped leaders of government leaders of universities, pastors of churches through the flower shop. For over 30 years, my husband and I, the shop, the staff, provided fresh cut flowers for the altars of my church, Papa Springs Missionary Baptist Church, every Sunday, and at First AME Church, where he helped build the church and, and serve, and that's how we know our honorable minister, Danny Minister, D. Hanklin, through First AM Church. But we didn't let the nomination of it get in the way. We blended us being in the community, and we put those flowers on those altars, and then we used them to take them to those sick in hospitals, those sick in homes, and let the church touch those who needed to be touched. So it's what you do where you are yes. and how you serve for what you do. Yes. 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 To keep you connected to what purpose God gives you. Mm -hmm. And that purpose for us to take that and then multiply it. And we were able to build a store, all glass building, at the entrance of the underground and 